all I'm good for is pushing buttons. <laughs> Are you on the side that I had there? Yeah. It should start right there. Yeah, he does. Here, see?
chapter 6. Verse 5. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. That's a, uh, a pretty harsh statement for God to make. But God knew what was going on in this earth. Amen. And if we take and, and we just listen to the news media that's uh, happening today uh, uh, in this world, people can get discouraged to the point. But it's not, it, it, it's not as bad as what it seems if all you listen to is the news media. We have a Lord in the city. Just like Lou just saying, his name is wonderful. We have a hope in our heart that Amen. can't even be imagined by the people that are out there and that are lost. I want you to open your uh, uh, Bibles to 1 Corinthians In the, uh, uh, I have more trouble, you know, we're going to start with the, in the book of Acts. So you, you, 1 Corinthians, we'll go there later. But a few weeks back, whenever I uh, uh, stood up here and, and talked about the three vacations, the uh, uh, justification, sanctification, and glorification, I felt so good. I mean, uh, uh, to me, that was something that uh, uh, I needed. And the next time uh, that I spoke, I felt good about this. Since then, I have never felt worse about myself than, than uh, uh, these last few weeks trying to get something together. Uh, it's, it's been bad. Praise I mean, the Lord. Uh, that third uh, you know, I, I tell myself that, uh, uh, well, the reason things are hap happening, you know, Satan's attacking you or something. Amen. But I, I don't know. I, I just felt like uh, so many questions. Once you start studying the Word of God and, and you look at, I mean, uh, uh, things come into your mind and you think, is that really the, the way? that uh, it is. I mean, are you sure uh, you've received the gift of the Holy Ghost? I mean, uh, uh, just because you were baptized uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, are you sure about that? I mean, all these questions come, come to mind that uh, uh, just seems to drive you down and depress you and make you want to uh, question everything that God has told you in his word is true. And then you, you think about the time that Jesus, when he had fasted, it was the word of God Amen. that Satan tried to use against him, but Jesus used the word of God in his defense. He used the word against Satan. But Satan, in the same sense, tried to tell Jesus, oh, if you jump off, I mean, uh, God has said uh, he'll send angels to protect you. Go ahead and jump. But then Jesus said, you know, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And then he, he tells him, he said, you have the power to turn these stones into bread. But Jesus told him, he said, bread, man shall live by more than just bread, by every word that comes out of the <coughs> mouth of God. So whenever you're, you're sitting there and you're studying it, it's easy for these questions and these doubts uh, to come in into your mind. But there is a, a, a word of God in here that will lift you up and, and prevent him from totally destroying you. We have more suicides by, with young teenagers 
and, and you read these statistics that they put down, and it, it seems unbelievable. We have more uh, uh, veterans that are committing suicide. They say so many every day. I don't, I don't know what the statistics are. But, and, and you question, how can these people do that to themselves? They don't have the love of God in their hearts. They don't have Jesus in their hearts. They, we as Christians <coughs> ought to be the happiest people in the world. Amen. We shouldn't be depressed or down at all. If we read what the Bible says, we shouldn't even question. I mean, do you understand what God has in store for you? For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. It doesn't matter what trials or tribulations you're going through. I mean, he's overcome the world. Amen. We are in the world, but he's overcome. I mean, I can't even imagine, and, and I'm talking to myself, why am I getting so depressed? Here I am trying to line out something to bring to you this morning, and most of you probably know more of what I do about the Bible anyway, and here I am standing up here trying to tell you something. You ought to come up here and you can probably tell me something. I don't need to be up here telling you something. I know Lou's going to get on to me. <laughs> but still, I was really, these last uh, couple of weeks, you can ask my wife, I struggled. Try, I mean, I got on my bed for the first time in, in a long, and I just cried. Praise she was Lord. in the other room, and it, it doesn't make sense to me why it's so hard. Why we, we struggle so hard? When I know that Jesus, he died on the cross for me, God justified me at the beginning of the time, and he's in the process of sanctifying me, and I know what he, that he's going to glorify us beyond our imaginable dreams in the future. And when I die, I'm going to go to sleep, my spirit's going to be with him, in, in heaven, I, I'm, I'm going to be raised again. This is not the end. This life Amen. is not the end of our story. This is just the beginning. And I was talking to my brother this morning. Went over to uh, pick up mom, stopped by his house, and talked to him this morning. And I explained to him, you know, what I thought about the, the life that we're in right now. Being the, the life of a newborn baby that's inside a mother's womb. That baby don't want to come out. That baby, the mother has to push it to get it to come out. That baby doesn't understand the future that it has, the life that it has uh, in the future. It can't understand it. It just wants to stay where it's at, stay comfortable. Well, that's the way we are in this life. We just want to stay here. We are not, I don't care who you are, absolutely 100% <coughs> positive of everything that's going to happen when we die. We know that the Word of God is here. We know we can stand on what He said. Amen. But we, what, what is it? If, if you, the hope that we have in our heart, it, but this, this Sunday, it, it was for some reason, it's been rough. The book of Acts, I started uh, uh, reading it and I was going to try to lay, lay out something. And <coughs> before I finished, I read the whole book of Acts. And I didn't come up with a single thing. To talk. There's probably a thousand messages in the book of Acts. If somebody that was educated and knew what they were doing could lay out uh, messages out of the book of Acts. I mean, it's a great book, just like Corinthians was. Oh, it's, it's a great book. Luke, they, they attribute the uh, book of Acts to Luke. It doesn't actually say in the book that Luke wrote it, but if you uh, uh, read some of the uh, 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 commentaries and stuff about the uh, book of Acts, it was Luke there, you know, uh, that wrote the book of Acts. He starts out there in the uh, first chapter. 
He says, The former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. He is talking to a, uh, a, a Gentile, a, a person that was not a Jew, and he was trying to lay out the foundation of, of, of what he was believing, how he believed, and, and the whole thing, the whole book, when you start out the book of Acts, it starts out the, talking about the Jews, uh, how the day of Pentecost happened, how it uh, all came about. Later on in the book, it start, talk, starts talking about Paul, how that uh, Paul went in his ministry to the Gentiles. The whole thing is, is laid out to us uh, here in, in, in these pages that if we'll just read it and believe what, what is said uh, by uh, Luke in, in this, this book, I mean, it, it's so wonderful that we have the opportunity that we have being Gentiles, not being Jews, that we have to worship God. Amen. To, to accept Him as our Lord and our Savior. And to realize that, that this is not the end of our life. This is only a short period of time. If we live here 70, 80, 100 years, I mean, that's just a small, that's not even a drop in the bucket compared to eternity. In uh, uh, Acts 10, We start out with uh, 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Now God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy <coughs> Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Now he's, he's saying he was there. He witnessed this. These things that happened to Jesus. He witnessed all of it. He witnessed the miracles that Jesus performed. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Amen. That must have been a, a, a miraculous thing. I mean, it scared them, in fact. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. They ate and drank with him after he rose from the Amen. dead. And I've heard our uh, pastor say, the kingdom of, of heaven, it's, it's here. It, you know, he, he, Jesus said, I'll not eat or drink of you, or not eat or drink of the fruit of the vine and, until... Uh, how does that go, Pastor? The kingdom of God. Yeah, and he's saying right here, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. The kingdom of God has been established. It is here. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that, is, that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. To him give all the prophets witness, and though his name and through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, 
the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. Wait a minute. They haven't been baptized yet. It, it doesn't matter in what sequence it comes. It said, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and mighty and magnified God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they to then prayed they him to tarry certain days. They received the Holy Ghost and then they were baptized. Right. They were baptized, then they received the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter in what Man's sequence. Yes, God has a plan, and we follow the plan. In Acts, oh, in 1 Corinthians, we'll go there now. First Corinthians chapter 12. I know that uh, uh, I've heard uh, uh, Brother Wayne talk about the problems uh, uh, talking to my dad when <coughs> because he hadn't spoken in tongues, he felt that he hadn't received the uh, uh, Holy Spirit. And I guess Dad had a lot of problems with it. I mean, I never talked to him. I was just a young man uh, uh, when it happened. But I can understand to a point the troubles that uh, he, he would have had trying to put everything uh, in his head. It, it says, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive yeah, the receive gift the of the Holy Ghost. Ghost. That's the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is eternal life. Let's, let's read chapter 12 here. It says, Your daddy believed this before I buried him. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with them. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of Spirit, to, a, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these workers, that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severely as he will. The Holy Spirit works in each and every one of us Amen. the way that he wants to work, not the way that we want him to work. You may go through your whole life and never speak in tongues. Right. But that doesn't mean you're not saved. That doesn't mean you haven't received eternal life. You may go through your high, through your whole life and never done any of the ten gifts of the Holy Spirit except go out and live your life the way that he wants you to live it. You can't imagine how much of a testimony that is. When we get a, a, a let me go ahead and keep it. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members that are one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit.
For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. God set the members, every one in the body, as it has pleased him. Carolyn, you're a member of the body of God. He is set, I mean, you might think that you don't ever do anything, you don't never prophesy, you don't speak in tongues, you don't, you'll never realize the blessing that you and my mom and Sally have been in my life. Just, just, being here, being faithful, Amen. serving God the way that a Christian woman should Amen. serve God, you, you'll never realize the blessings, that you, not only just me, but I'm sure members of this church that have gone on. Sister Johnson, I can remember her, she used to stand up and she <coughs> testify, and I mean, all she ever, only medicine she ever had was, what was it, black broth? I don't even remember what that was. I don't even know what that stuff was. But that's the only medicine she had. And she used to testify that she'll never realize the blessings that she was. And I was just a young man back then. But I heard her testimony. And it may not have been until years later that, that I realized the love that that woman had for God. Amen. Just like the love that Carolyn and Mom and Sally have for God, that, that's a love that it, it shows without them having to speak, without them having to say anything. Just looking at the way that they live their life is a blessing to me. But now I have God set many members, every one of them in the body, as it had pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are the many members yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head or the feet, I have no need of, of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. You, you might think you're feeble, mom, uh, Sally, and Carolyn, but you are more needed than what you realize, I think. Sometimes we as Christians, we we put less of an importance on us than what God does. God, God sees us. I mean, he died for us. Amen. Can, can you imagine? I mean, that's how important he thought we were. He died for us on a cross. God raised him from the dead and made him the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these were bestowed more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Every one of us are needed. And it's not just us. God has many other out there in other bodies uh, of uh, churches. I mean, they, not, they may not be <coughs> at the level that uh, we are. We think we're a little better than them because uh, we had our pastor. He taught us from the Word of God. There's no question about, uh, well, I've had all kinds of questions in the last couple of weeks. So I can't say that, but I've relied on his teachings to get me through this stuff. For our commonly parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked. He's given more abundant honor to the part that lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, but the members should have the same care one for another that the members should have the same care Amen. one to another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Ye are the body of Christ, Amen. and members in particular. You might be sitting on the back pew, you might be sitting on the front pew. We're all members of the body of Christ and you're every one of you are important and you just can't imagine how important you are 
And God had set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, third teachers, after the miracles, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. I mean, you might just be the one in there that says helps. I mean, Rhonda and, and uh, uh, See there? Man, I'm getting all kind of people. Ronnie and Rhonda. I mean, look at the work that you do here in this church. And, and uh, the, the helps. And as far as the uh, government of, of this church, Lou. I mean, she. But it, it, it's in the word of God how important you are in this body. And Amen. sometimes we just have to stop and realize that you know what, I'm not just a nobody, I am a child of God. Child of the king. You are a child of God. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet, covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Now, wait a minute. You mean there's a more excellent way than the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. He's going to show us a more excellent way. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. If you don't have love in your life, if you don't have love to share with other people, you're in trouble. You better watch yourself. Because you're getting real close to Satan uh, coming in and, and putting all those doubts in your mind and you giving up. Don't ever do it. And though I have the gift of prophecy and an understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, I mean, there are uh, uh, people, you know, the, the Bible says there's going to be those that come before him in the last day. He said, we work miracles in your name. We cast out devils. And we did all these great things in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me. Ye the work iniquity. I never knew you. Well, who were they? You know, I, when I think of that, I think of uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. When they sinned and, and uh, 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 whatever it was they did, whether it was the apple they bit or, or whatever it was. And, uh, but they went against what God told them Amen. not to do. And when they, when they were confronted by God, when, when uh, God confronted Adam, uh, the first thing he did was, hey, this woman, this woman gave me an I ate. Well, it, you know, it sounds like to me, <clears throat> when these people come before Jesus, and they say, we've cast out devils in your name, we've healed the sick in your, they're not trying to tell Jesus, they're telling maybe the other witnesses around Look, we did these things in his name, didn't we? Huh? We did these things. Well, it ain't going to do any good. Just like it didn't do Adam any good to pass the buck to Eve. It didn't do him any good to say, hey, it was this woman. They're not going to be able to say, hey, look, we did these things in Jesus' name, didn't we? And Jesus is going to tell them, said, you did it all for the wrong reasons. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. <clears throat> and though I bestow all goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and of not charity, if profit me nothing. It, I don't, I'd have to be uh, pretty far out there before I'd set my body on fire, because I've been burned a couple times, and it hurts. It, and, it, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. You know, some of these rich people that are out there, they. They uh, uh, say, look, I gave a million dollars to this. In fact, one of them here while back, I don't know who it was, supposedly gave a billion, a billion dollars. Yeah, none of that's going to do him any good if he don't have Christ in his life. If he don't have the, the word of God in his heart, if he's not standing on what this Bible teaches, then it doesn't do any, it says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, look what I did. I gave all this money. I did all this stuff. That, that sometimes is what reminds me of the Jehovah Witness when they go out and, and they're going door to door. They said, look, we're going door to door to get these people. 
It, it's not going to do them any good if they don't have the word of God in their heart, if they don't have Christ in their life. Amen. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity promiseth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. It doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Boy, sometimes I lose it. <laughs> and it wouldn't be, it doesn't take much to provoke me, I'll bet. <laughs> I, I can remember one time I was having an argument with my daughter. I don't even know what the argument was about, but she stood in front of me and, and, and I was telling her what I wanted done or, or how I wanted something. And she just looked at me and said, whatever, and turned around and walked off. I almost lost it. <laughs> I mean, kids sometime, I'm driving this bus, and I don't, it, it's just <coughs> it's like their attitude sometimes is just unbelievable. Now, uh, do they treat their parents that way at home? Do, do they, they have no respect of authority at all, period. Now there are some kids that get on the bus and, and they say good morning. Uh, when they get off the bus, they say thank you. But there are some kids that they just get on and this is their right. They have a right to ride this bus. Right. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. When, when they get to school, I'm sure they treat the teachers the same way. And I, I don't understand. <coughs> Where the kids are coming from, of course, our pastor, he has a degree in psychology. He could probably explain it to you a little better. It has to be the same way at home. They're only spending a few hours at school. How can they get that bad with a few hours at school? Because one reason, we took Jesus out of the uh, classroom. We took the Word of God out of the uh, 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 schools altogether. They can take the... I, I, when I was talking to my brother this morning, the word, the biography basically of Jesus was written within like a 30 to a 50 year period after his death. The Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four gospels, was all written real close <coughs> to his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. And yet they won't teach that as truth in there, but what is it, Alexander the Great, his bi biography was written 400 years after his death. And yet they'll teach that in our schools. They'll teach that as if everything that was written about him was absolute truth. And it was 400 years after his death. But yet they'll, they'll take something like the Bible about Jesus that was written within the first generation basically, and they'll say, well, no, that can't be true. Uh, we can't teach that uh, in school because uh, uh, that's uh, some religious thing and we've got to separate uh, church and uh, state. They're making mistakes. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And you know, the Bible says the, the wisdom of man, is, God's going to bring the wisdom of man to naught. The, the wisdom, man feels <coughs> that he is so wise in everything he does. I mean, look, we got a, 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 what, a satellite out there, the Hubble telescope that could look out thousands of light, or millions of light years, really, uh, uh, into the future, they say, because those lights, uh, that the Hubble telescope are capturing were sent out millions of years ago because of the light years that it had to travel. And they think they are so smart in everything. Every how It's all laid out. Uh, every, they understand how it's working. God's going to bring the wisdom of man to naught. Amen. It's not going to, compared to God, it's, it's not going to be nothing. It, it's, man's just going to be so surprised, I think. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, 
then that which is in part shall be done away with. When Jesus returns, that which is in, it says, but when that which is perfect is come, what was perfect? Jesus Christ was perfect. He Amen. never said anything he apologized for. He never did anything that he had to ask forgiveness for. He lived the perfect life. He died on the cross for us. God raised him from the dead and made him the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. We are going to be made perfect. We are going to be glorified. We are going to be transformed. And, and I mean, we're going to put on immortality. We're going to put off this Amen. decaying body. We're going to put on immortality. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. When I was uh, uh, trying to uh, line out this message, that I <laughs> said, Steve, why are you doing this? I mean, why are you questioning all of these questions? It said, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I said, Steve, put away these childish thoughts because I know what the Word of God says. I, I don't understand fully everything that's in the Bible, but I understand enough to know that Jesus is in control. Amen. God is in control of everything. Yes. It might look like what it said there uh, in the uh, uh, book of Genesis, everything is evil, but my God is in control. Amen. He is in control of every planet, every, every uh, solar system, every atom that's here on this planet. He is in control of everything. It's hard for us to even imagine. Well, we... we Never could imagine everything about God, but I mean, if we could, we'd probably as good. We never, we never can. But God is in control of everything. And you say, then why is everything so messed up? Because of man. Because God gave man a free will. Man can mess things up if he wants to. And he did. He did a pretty good job of it. So now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is charity. We can have faith and hope and charity, but the greatest of these is charity. How what, what's the Bible say? How does he know that we are the followers of Christ? The love that we have one for another. That's what the Bible says. That's how right. the world out there is going to know that we are followers of uh, Christ is because of the love we have one for another. Sometimes this world can, can get us down, but I'm telling you, if you'll turn to the Word of God and listen to what God tells you, it'll build you up. It'll over. He's already overcome the world. Now He's telling us in His Word how to overcome the world. Amen. And all we have to do is listen to what He's studied to show yourself approved. Don't let these. Uh, uh, what, what is it? One of the uh, uh, men in the Bible said he he wanted to do good. And he went out, and, and I mean, he didn't go out. I mean, what, what is it? Paul the bad knocks at the door or something? You talking about when Paul said, when I desire to do good, even with his presence? Yeah. I mean, it, it's there. When I desire to do good, evil is present. Yes. But don't let it win out. Resist I mean, and flee from you. Yes. Yeah, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Yes. And I'm telling you, He's going to be there, so you better get ready to resist him. Put on the whole armor of God. Everything. Amen. Put it put it all on. Have the sword with you. Uh, what part of the uh, uh, your body isn't protected? The backside. 
So don't turn around and run. I mean, face him head on. Resist him. Amen. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I mean, you turn around and run and he's going to stab you in the back. That's the only part that's not protected. You got a breastplate, you got a shield, you got a helmet, you got uh, uh, your shoes on, you got a sword. He can't stand against you unless you turn and run. Don't turn and run. There ain't nothing to turn and run from. He's overcome the world and, and he's helped us uh, in every way that we can think of. I know th this, uh, uh, I don't know, I have trouble with today's. I hope that uh, uh, it helps you out a little bit. Mom, I love you. Carolyn, I love you. I mean, and, and Sally, I love you too. I mean, you women will never know. Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you right now, the, the love that you've shown me over these years and, and the faithfulness that you have uh, to this church, I mean, yeah, Carolyn, don't ever think because you just sit there and listen that you're not a blessing to this church. You are a blessing to this church. Ronnie and Rhonda, I mean, every one of you are a blessing to this church. And I love every one of you. That's all I have for today. I, I hope that, uh, uh, I know it's not near to an hour long, but yeah, you get to go uh, to lunch early today. You gave the devil a good opportunity. <laughs> all right, before we, uh, uh, Sing, do we have any testimonies this morning? We've already asked them once. I don't know if uh, anybody. How about the offering? Okay, do we have any birthdays, huh? Offering. Oh, we need an offering. Okay. Hey, we got money in here already. Look at here. We must have had birthdays last week. Oh, there's 70 cents in here, huh, baby? <laughs> Dear Lord, we ask your blessings on our offering. We ask your blessings on those that have to give and those that have not to give. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Next Sunday, God willing, I'm going to be bringing a message on what happens when we die. That is something that's going to happen to all of us. We don't like to talk about it, but it's going to take place. I was listening to Dr. Stanley, and he made the same error and mistake that the River View Baptist Church minister made on the television this morning as to what happens whenever an individual dies. He said, how can you be so arrogant to say that you know more than they do? Well, that's sometimes that people have a blind spot. I know today that at Disneyland, they'll close the door and the new, a new uh, adventure that they have down there you have to have tickets in advance to be able to get into it. And whenever we die, you have to have a ticket in advance to be able to know where you're going. So bring a piece of paper and a pencil. I'll give you chapter and verse of what happens whenever we die. And you can follow it through the Bible. When I was uh reading this and talking about the uh, the people, the number of people that are committing suicide. Uh, it's just uh, it's just unbelievable. Uh, I mean, I would have never imagined uh, uh, that. Uh, and so far since they started the abortion thing, 60 million babies have been aborted. That's, uh, this whole world, it's getting rough, but we have a rock to stand on. Yes. We don't have to fear. We have an anchor that, that is sure and steadfast. Amen. And that's where America and the world is at today. They have rejected the stone that God <coughs> gave us to build on. And we have built on the sand. And we are, according to our scientists, according to our learned people, we are at the end a word that education can save us, that knowledge can save us. We're at the place that mankind has no answer whatsoever, except that we turn to the truth of God's word and understand the foundation.
that he gives us to where we can be sure and we can be steadfast. And only few are going to make it in. Only few, not the many. He said that wide is the way. Broad is the gate that leads to destruction. But narrow, and I'm not talking about uh, some of this old religious stuff that went over the last hundred years or so. I'm talking about what the truth will set you free. And today, we need to understand the truth that will make us free. Amen. Do we have any birthdays today we're celebrating? If not, let's all stand and we'll sing There Is a River. <laughs> Let's sing it one more time and I'll dismiss you from the word of prayer. safely next Sunday. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Have a great week. Stay safe. We'll see you next Sunday.